So thank you again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you having us here. Today we are going over using and understanding Windows 10 at your agency. Uh, we're going to be uh, kind of going over some features, tips, tricks, and then getting to the real advice on how it's going to work at your business. Not just showing you all the highlights, but we're going to uh, try to keep it real here for you as well. So first and foremost, it is time to upgrade to Windows 10, folks. Um, we are uh, rolling out Windows 10 machines to pretty much all new deployments for agencies now. Um, I will cover at the end some compatibility issues to look out for, just so you know if it's going to work for your agency or not. Um, Microsoft is also making it difficult to buy new machines and be able to legally downgrade also, by the way. Um, they have put an end to that program, so we are even having issues now where um, we, we don't have much time left to be able to downgrade you to older machines. Um, so I'm going to uh, hopefully tune this to making it so you're able to quickly know and understand and not be afraid of using Windows 10 at the agency. Um, some key features for starters is, you know, all the cliches, faster, more secure, and you can take advantage of new hardware, but it's really true. Um, it's a highly optimized version of Windows 7 and then beyond Windows 8 under the hood. So it is quicker to doing uh, the basic things on the same hardware. Um, it is more secure. They, they've built a lot of new technologies into it, um, not only on the, uh, the login issue, but um, as far as combating malware and exploits and things like that. And then there are specific improvements under the hood to make it take advantage of new hardware better. Uh, for example, the new Intel processors, uh, all their features are, um, are, are capable of being supported under Windows 10, but they're actually not on older operating systems. So you will get more out of the newer machine on Windows 10 than you would an older machine. So let's talk about getting started. Um, we're going to get literal here. And the first thing I encourage everyone to do is when you have Windows 10, click on your start and actually type in get started uh, there's a cool app that they built in called the getting started app and it has a uh, lots of different tours and tutorials and in previews of just different things that windows 10 can do um, most of the time these type of things are, are you know not so useful and helpful but microsoft did a great job in the getting started app with windows 10 here so if everybody has a little bit of time i encourage you just to click on start type in get started and you'll find a lot of cool tips and tricks. A lot of the things that I'll cover here will be in there and even more. So when it comes to logging into Windows 10, there's lots of different ways to do it now. Um, a lot more flexibility. If you're used to logging into your computer that's not connected to a business network, for example, at a home, or let's say your agency is on the cloud, you might not be actually part of a network, but your PCs might be set up for standalone. Um, they have what's now tied in with a Microsoft account. So you, if you had a Hotmail account or an Outlook.com account, you actually sign in with those credentials. Uh, what's neat is what that does is if you sign in uh, with using a Windows account to multiple machines, it'll actually carry your settings over, carry over your favorites, um, desktop backgrounds, uh, different configuration settings all automatically for you. Of course, you can have it tied into a domain account, you know, your corporate work network if you have your own servers and in-house system, so that'll work just like you're used to, to having it. So no fears about it not working the way it should uh, for a corporate network. And then for mobile devices and tablets, you've got a couple more sign-on options that you didn't have before either. We can switch your sign-in to using a PIN, which is helpful if you're on a tablet with a touch screen, a lot easier than typing out a password. And you could even set it to a picture password, kind of like you do on a phone where you have a swipe to unlock, if you will. But in this manner, you actually have a picture displayed on the screen and you have to draw patterns on the picture with your finger. Um, to set those up, they're very quick and simple. Under settings, uh, as you can see here under home, there's sign in options and you can add a pin and you can even add a picture password. So lots of uh, cool different ways you can uh, customize your sign in. Again, I think this is great for those who have any uh, touchscreen uh, capable devices especially. Consider the pin or a picture password. Um, the most exciting news for those of you who uh, tried Windows 8 and went, ugh, 
uh, Windows 10 has the start menu back. Um, so we are, we're thankful for Microsoft for that. Um, it's uh, kind of a nice hybrid of Windows 7 and Windows 8 start menu. Uh, it's a lot smarter too, so I'll show you some of its capabilities very quickly here. Um, it's got a most used section, just like Windows 7 did, so it lists the stuff that you use most right at the top. It's just smart enough to see what programs are running most often. It's also got system controls right there. So again, just like Windows 7, where you've got your security and devices and printers right on the, the start menu, Windows 10 has it as well. They're just different looking icons, and I'll show you. And then, of course, your program menu. So if you're a Windows 7 user, that's exactly what you have right now. Uh, if you're a Windows 8 user, it's uh, the best of both worlds. So here's what the start menu actually looks like. Um, no longer is it a full screen start screen, but a just a, a hybrid of, you see on the left hand side, we've got again the most used, our program icons, and then our settings icons on the left. And then you do get a little expansion of the Windows 8 style menu, it just lists some of your Windows 8 style programs there. So a nice combination. Let's break it down a little bit. So here's the start menu, you, you can see uh, a little better detail here. So top left, again, is the most used, um, and then our list of programs. Obviously, if you move your mouse up there, you can just scroll up and down it, and it sorts them in alphabetical order. It makes it nice and easy to find things. Expanding those few buttons on the left-hand side, those are our settings and controls. So you've got our file explorer option right there. The uh, little gear is our settings. I'm going to be referencing settings a lot today in the webinar, so it's quick to get to settings by clicking the gear. And our sh uh, start, uh, shutdown, restart, standby, log off, that's your power icon. So it's nice having it always there. A little tip and trick for you here too, if you, instead of doing a normal click on the, uh, the Windows button, or the start button I'll call it, is um, that you're able to have the uh, old style menus pop up as well. So on the right hand side, um, you'll see uh, the menu that you get with you right click. So if you right click, you'll see this other menu and it gets you a lot of other uh, old, old uh, options. Uh, a very nice new feature that I use all the time um, is called the Action Center. So you get the Action Center up by clicking on the icon on the lower right of your screen. You can see I got a little red arrow drawn to it there. Um, the Action Center will probably look familiar to you if you're a smartphone user because if you're a Windows Phone user, um, you actually have an Action Center and it looks just like that. Uh, if you're an Android user, most Android, if you swipe from the top down, you get this. And then iPhone users, you have that as well in your quick menu too. So it's kind of bringing the interface that we're all getting used to right into our desktop computer as well. So we can switch to tablet mode, we can look at our different networks, i.e. you know, changing our wireless if we're at a hotel or switching to airplane mode if we're on a, a tablet or a or laptop, if we're on a plane. Um, so a lot of quick little uh, uh, options here right in the Action Center. Also you'll notice at the top of the Action Center there it says new, no new notifications. Uh, that brings notifications right to their uh, Action Center as well. So if your computer has any updates to apply, it'll list them there. If there were any threats found, it'll list them there. So uh, kind of a one-stop shop to figure out what's going on with your computer and to make very quick uh, settings. Um, searching has been greatly uh, improved in Windows 10. Starting with Windows Vista, actually, you could just type into the search uh, into the search slash run box and it'll find stuff. It got better with 7 and 8. They changed it so whenever you press the start button, you can just start typing. You may or may not have known that. But if you click, I'm sorry, the Windows button or the Start button and just start typing, it automatically puts what you type into a search. Well, Windows 10 does that too still. So if you uh, click on Start or if you just press the Windows key on your keyboard and start typing, it'll start uh, typing an inline search right in that run box. If you type in the name of a program, it just automatically appears as the first search result. So for example, if you'd press the Windows key or click the Start menu and type in Notepad, you can see, as I did here, Notepad desktop app pops right up. What's even better is if you get more familiar with this, just type in, uh, after clicking Start, type in N-O-T-E-P and hit Enter real quick. And you just know that since there's only one thing that starts with those five letters, 
and by pressing enter, it just accepts the first search. You can open your program so much quicker with Windows 10, just typing a few characters and pressing enter than you would have to scrolling through the menus. So it makes it very quick and simple to open your programs. So inline search built right in. And it can search for programs, but it can also search on your files and folders and even content on the web now too. Um, last but not least, there is a uh, even more powerful search built in called Cortana. Uh, for those of you that use Siri uh, or you've seen Google advertising it lately with their new phone, the Google Assistant, um, this is Microsoft's answer to those folks. Uh, Cortana is uh, their artificial intelligence that's been built into Windows 10. Um, and you can access her by uh, clicking actually in the search bar that appears by default next to your uh, start menu or your Windows button, if you will. Um, at first, it just says, hi, I'm, I'm here. Do you want to use me? Yes or no. So if you want to start using Cortana, even to try her out, click I'm in. And then she's going to ask what your name is. Isn't that nice? Nice and friendly. So um, believe it or not, as she's talking to you, she will use your name. Um, so you can type it in, say use that, or you can tell it not to bother. And now really anything you can do with a Siri type of thing, you can do with your Windows 10 computer, including find stuff that you've worked on, open your programs. So it's kind of like Siri combined with the Dragon Naturally Speaking for controlling your machine. Really, really cool feature. And what I found is it really doesn't seem to slow the computer down by having it turned on. Works very well. Uh, here's another great productivity tool that I found uh, very useful built into Windows 10, and it's called the Task View. This is what enables you to run multiple desktops. Uh, I find this very handy for agencies that um, maybe haven't gone to triple monitors yet, um, or just for those that maybe work different roles throughout the day. They'll do processing in the morning, um, you know, scanning and pro doing mail at lunch, and then um, you know, other stuff in the afternoon. What task view enables you to do, by clicking on this little icon that you can make appear next to your start menu, it gives you the ability to have multiple different desktops at once. Um, you can toggle it on and off, as you can see, by going in your taskbar options. You know, so you right click on your taskbar and uh, it's right there, a checkbox that says show task view button. So those of you with Windows 10, check it out, show task view button. And it gives you the ability, again, to have multiple desktops, which really gives you different sets of programs and icons. So I'll show you what it looks like. When you press the Task View button, it gives you this thing. Here's a display of all my programs that are open. And you see on the bottom right, I have a New Desktop button. When I click New Desktop, it gives me this. Now I've got Desktop 1. I've got what we're looking at here now. And then Desktop 2 is just a blank desktop. So if I switch to desktop 2, I can open a bunch more programs, have a whole new set of programs to alt-tab between. I have a whole new taskbar with all different menu options if I want to. They show different programs. So it makes it a heck of a lot easier to juggle a lot more programs um, and not remember, not like lose track of what's been open. Um, I've seen some people use it successfully by uh, doing all their internet stuff under one desktop and having like four web pages open at once on different screens. And then the other desktop might be your productivity desktop, i.e. your Outlook and your management system. So just by clicking on that task view button, you can switch between uh, a whole set of programs with just two clicks. Very neat. <clears throat> For tablet users like myself, um, uh, there is a tablet mode that you can turn on. Again, I'll show you that uh, it is available through the Action Center. So that's the uh, top left icon in the Action Center. What that does is that, in just a simple click, optimizes your uh, whole computer interface for tablets and touch screens. Um, what that means is that it, by default, changes your start menu to go full screen, kind of like Windows 8 did. Um, you still have the same look and feel. It's a start button still, but it just takes up the whole screen. So the buttons are just bigger and easier to touch or uh, with your finger or, or a stylus or a pen. It also will, by default, make your Windows apps that don't open full screen, open in full screen. That way, again, you have more real estate. just makes it uh, that much more friendly for tablets and convertibles. So, um, for example, I'm working on uh, a, what looks like a laptop, but I can unhinge the screen. 
or if you have a Microsoft Surface, for example, um, or any other device uh, like that, tablet mode uh, will just make it that much more friendly. And you can, again, toggle back and forth. If you dock back on your keyboard, take it out of tablet mode, and then it'll put the controls back instantly. Uh, also with this, I've experienced no lag going back and forth. It's very smooth. Ink Workspace, uh, it's another extra little uh, uh, area set aside for those of you that do have a uh, stylus or a touchscreen device. Um, it automatically becomes an option that's accessible if you do have some kind of a digital pointing device hooked up to your computer. It's just smart enough to see it. Um, so again, any computer that comes with a stylus, or you may or may not realize, but if your computer has Bluetooth, you can just go buy a Bluetooth stylus and then it, uh, it will just work. As long as, you're t as long as your uh, laptop will support the touchscreen, you can go buy a Bluetooth stylus and it'll work. You don't have to just use your finger. And that's another option that you can just get to uh, right from the uh, taskbar. So right click and you can choose to enable the ink workspace shortcut. So as you can see down uh, at the bottom there highlighted in blue, I clicked on my ink workspace. And it gives you a uh, quick one click access to uh, being able to hand write sticky notes. Um, just bring up what's called a sketch pad, almost like having a, a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper up that you can just doodle on. Um, it's kind of like Microsoft OneNote, just a much simpler version of it. And then uh, access to a screen sketch. Again, you can just draw on your screen. Uh, for those of you who haven't used OneNote, um, I would encourage still using OneNote um, rather than just the, uh, the sketch pad. Um, and we've actually done a webinar on OneNote, so I encourage you guys to uh, go check that out on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. A great productivity tool, and it works very, very well with, uh, with a stylus, too. Let's talk about some of the built-in apps in Windows 10. Uh, Microsoft was nice to, to build in a bunch of new cool stuff, and I'm going to tell you that you're probably not going to want to use any of it. Um, First and foremost is Windows or Microsoft Edge. This is their new web browser. And by default, when you boot up your Windows 10 computer, you're going to notice that the Internet Explorer icon looks different. It kind of looks like this weird looking E now. Um, that's their new web browser. It's a very much more uh, streamlined browser, uh, even more so than, than Chrome and Firefox are. Um, they've really built it to uh, work uh, very fast. Um, it cuts down on power usage. Uh, it's better for touch. Um, the only problem is it's just not that great compatibility-wise for all our company websites yet. They've got what's called built-in Windows Reader. So this takes place of a PDF and a file reader all together. It previews and opens lots of different kind of uh, uh, file types. Windows Photos, that's a nice full-screen photo viewer. Um, and again, most people are not going to want to use these at work. Um, at home, they're great. On touch screens, they're great. Um, but as far as work goes, again, just from a productivity standpoint, uh, they're just going to be a little different. So very, very easy and quick to, to change your defaults. I'm going to show you that next year, so just so you're not afraid and think this is a stumbling block of why you can't use it. And whenever we roll these out for agencies, we do this by default for you. So you'll have all the settings that you need right off the bat. So to change your default programs in Windows 10, uh, you simply click on your start or you press the Windows key on your keyboard again and start typing like we did at the, uh, at the beginning with our notepad. Just start typing the word default. And what you want to do is click on the default programs app. Uh, I, I don't want you to click on the uh, one that says desktop app. Just click on the one that says default programs. It's a little simpler to use. You can do the same thing in either place. This way is just a little easier for you. You know, like, like I said, I like to keep it uh, real-world advice here. So this will open up a thing that looks like this, and you uh, just click on Set Your Default Programs, and then you pick your programs through the list and click Set Defaults, as you can see here. So the ones I would recommend are, again, Internet Explorer, um, your uh, Acrobat Reader, and your Photo Viewer. Set those back. So as you can see here, just click on Internet Explorer, click set this as default, and it's that quick and simple. You only have to do that once. It is a per user setting, so if you give somebody else the computer, they'll have to do it when they sign in as them.
Let's get into settings. Uh, remembering earlier in the presentation, I showed that the settings is accessible by clicking on start or pressing the Windows key and clicking that little gear. So that gives you this crazy looking place. It's kind of like the new modern control panel, if you will. They've, they've broken up uh, into different sections and they've done a pretty good job at explaining what you can do in each different section. Um, so if you're going to want to change system settings, things that has to do with the action center, um, how things are going to look and feel on the start menu, um, those are going to be under system. You'll find some of it also under personalization. Um, if you're going to uh, add or, or change devices, obviously that's under devices. Accounts, again, is where you go to change your login types to set it to sync with your Microsoft account, you know, to uh, set up your PIN code, your picture login, those kind of things. Um, and then one place I really want to focus on uh, is update and security. Now, you would think at first this is handled by your IT people, and I sure hope it is. Um, whenever we do these for agencies, we're always making sure we go through and do these things. But a huge tip for anybody using Windows 10 if you haven't done this already, you're going to want to do what we call defer upgrades. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have uh, not heard of Windows 11. The reason is, is Microsoft is really changing the way things work. Uh, if you're a Mac person, you know this, that you've been on OS X, they call it, for ages. And Microsoft is kind of changing to that model as well. They're planning on writing out Windows 10 for quite a while. And instead, what they're going to be doing is every six months to a year, they're going to be releasing a big upgrade. So last year, uh, maybe uh, early fall, late summer, they released what they called the anniversary upgrade. Uh, again, this spring, they're releasing another one that's going to be focused around content creator stuff. Basically, they're like upgrading to Windows 10.1 and then Windows 10.2. And they're going to be coming up with upgrades again every so often. We recommend, though, that you defer upgrades if you're using the computers at work. Uh, we have been doing this for a while now on all the agency machines that we deploy again um, because we will find that uh, sometimes things that are built into Windows cause issues with other things. So, again, you go to uh, Settings, Update and Security, click Advanced, and check that box. As you can see, I've got checked here that says Defer Upgrades. Um, I'll talk about a couple things that uh, arise if you might have that anniversary update that got installed. So if it's a brand new Windows 10 computer, defer upgrades, and uh, I'll show you a couple problems you'll avoid. So compatibility-wise, um, looking at hardware, you want to make sure you're looking at what kind of printers and scanners you have. Um, old, old printers and scanners just might not be Windows 10 compatible, but that's just because they're getting older. And uh, the... Software vendors don't always release uh, those softwares for the newer operating systems. It's just not profitable for them to keep updating old stuff. That's how they get you to buy new stuff, right? We have seen, though, also that a, a perfectly working video adapter or a webcam, once you get the Windows 10 anniversary update, they have some problems sometimes. Now, that's, that's a very general statement, I know, but that's why we just say, as a default, defer upgrades at work. Um, ask your IT people if they're doing this. They can give you some tips on what, uh, uh, what hardware may be more compatible with their upgrades. But just to be safe, we say defer those upgrades just for that reason. On the software side of things, we've also seen a couple software programs that didn't exactly like that Windows uh, anniversary update either. And that goes to older versions of a program called RoboForum, which we've talked about in previous webinars. Uh, so if you're a RoboForum agency, as long as you're on version 7, you're fine, which has been out for a couple of years. So hopefully you're at least at that version. And also, parts of AMS 360, if you're on uh, pre-2016, we also want to make sure you've deferred the upgrades because that anniversary update can cause a problem uh, kind of buried deep down a little bit. So since we're talking about management system, we're going to close by just letting you know, okay, where, where are his management system support with Windows 10? So to be what they call supported, AMS 360, they want on version 2016 R1, uh, Applied Epic 2016, and Applied TAM 2015 with at least maintenance update one. 
Now, what I want to explain here, though, is we've gone around with uh, agency management system vendors uh, with this for years and years and years, is supported does not mean compatible. Um, I don't know how many of you remember this, but when I started working at Smart ages ago, um, the management system vendors didn't support antivirus. That didn't mean it didn't work. That just means that they're not going to bother training their support people on how to help you if, that, if there is a particular issue. They're just going to hide and say that it's not supported. Sorry, we won't help you. But in our experience, everything listed here works just fine one version back. Again, we just want to make sure you defer your upgrades. But everything will work fine one version back we have seen. Doesn't mean compatible. Just means what they're training their support folks to do. So hopefully that will give you a nice background for being more confident with Windows 10. We see it, uh, it can be very successful at agencies if we just have some options set right and uh, have some uh, settings tuned to make it quick and smooth for users. There's a lot under the hood that's going to make it a lot better system for you. So again, we do want to see you making that leap to Windows 10. If you're not sure if it's going to be right for your agency for one reason or another, please don't hesitate to reach out and, and ask us at any time. So we do thank you again for uh, joining us today. We appreciate it. And uh, again, I mentioned a couple other of our webinars. We do have those posted online too of things I referenced here today. Um, you can visit us here at our uh, YouTube channel as, uh, as seen on screen.